Wing Chun versus boxing techniques. What is better for you? What's the difference between boxing, which has a long history in America, and Wing Chun, which has a long history in China? Let's find out in this video. So I've been practicing Wing Chun for many years. Boxing, I've been practicing for about a year, so I'm no expert, but I have worked with Jamal Charlo, the WBC middleweight champion of the world. So I've been able to use techniques from both different styles in my fighting. So I'm gonna show you some differences right now. If you wanna get more awesome Wing Chun and martial arts videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like and comment, tell me what you think about this video, tell me what you want to learn and what you wanna see from now on from David Wong. So let's get started with the Wing Chun versus boxing. Before we get started, just know that all I'm about to say is subjective. Everybody has their personal tastes, personal styles, and there's so many wide ranges of boxing styles and Wing Chun styles, so everybody has their own opinion. So this is just my opinion, and I'm gonna show you what I've learned. So to compare the main differences between Wing Chun and boxing, we're gonna find out what is the most common attack in each style. So what's the most common attack in boxing? That's right, it's the jab, right? So the jab, why is it effective? Because it's fast, and it doesn't require much commitment. It helps me set up things, right? Jab, jab, there's lots of different kinds of jabs, right? Long range jabs, right? There's short range jabs, short ones, flicker jabs, just using the hand, just to get it, just to annoy the guy, right? There's power jabs, where I put all my body weight and I throw into it, body jabs like that. So there's many different kinds of jabs. In Wing Chun, what is the most common attack in Wing Chun. The staple attack for Wing Chun. It's a straight blast, or basically it's the first punch that you learn in Wing Chun. You see it's the straight punch. But it's a lot more effective when you're using the chain reaction. Like, okay, obviously you're not gonna do it when he's blocking like this, but you're gonna do it when you're in the side, like this, right? Or you open up the, the middle and go punch in here. Okay, so the chain blast, um, I wouldn't go just if he has his guard up, I wouldn't just go straight blast. I would kick and then go in straight blast, right? Kick and he drops his hands and then I go in, right? And I don't look at his legs when I kick. I look up here and I kick, all right? What's the most powerful attack in boxing? Many people would argue that it is the overhand. Why? Because you have the most range and the most wind up and the most, and you're also using downward force because I want to go overhand and down into his jaw. Lots of knockouts happen with the overhand. What's one of the most powerful attacks in Wing Chun? It's similar, but now using, using the elbow. Boom, okay, boom. So you use a pad. So the overhand, very powerful, go for the head, because you go over his shoulder, and you go right into the chin, okay? So, boom, okay? And then the elbow is like, boom, boom, like that. So very powerful techniques. Let's talk about stance. In boxing, very conventional boxing stance is like this. So why do you want to learn martial arts? Why do you want to learn fighting? Is it because you want to unlock your full potential, overcome your limits so that you can become a stronger person? Then if you want to do that, come check out my Chi Life Mastery webinar. It's a free event. Just go to chilifemastery.com and you can learn how I went from being very weak to becoming strong, how I was broke to become very successful, and how I was dealing with depression and anxiety and how I got out of that to become very happy and very energetic. So go to chilifemastery.com and I'll see you there. In boxing, very conventional boxing stance is like this, orthodox stance. You got your, your gloves protecting your face, your jaw. You got the black glove protecting your face and your jaw. And then your head is tilted slightly, stuck in your shin because you want to protect the most vulnerable spot on your face, which is your shin. So if I punch here, his head, he blocks it with his head because this is hard. If I punch here, he blocks it here. If I punch here, he blocks it here. If I punch low, he uses the elbow to block here. Okay, and then he's got his gut backwards, so it's harder for me to reach, all right? And there's no kicks. So this is a very effective defensive posture for boxing. He can also launch attacks from there. He can jab, he can cross, right? He can hook, right? So that's the boxing stance. In Wing Chun, very common stance is like this because I don't have big gloves to block, so I'm not gonna just keep my hands here because it's just a thin hand or a thin fist and there's all this space around my hands that he can attack, especially if he doesn't have gloves on. So what I want to do is I want to use my hands to intercept him when I come in for an attack, right? So either that way or like that, right? So um, I'm using my hands 
to stick to him while he's attacked. And it doesn't work when he do, does a really fast jab because it doesn't give me enough time to stick. It's too fast, right? So it only works against, let's say, yes, when he's like really committing to a, to a punch, right? If he's really committing, then it works. It doesn't really work for fast flicking actions. Another reason we stand like this is because we're not just using our hands. I'm also using my feet. This I fake up here. I can kick him in the balls very easily like this, right? So a very good technique is while he's looking up here with my hands up here, I kick him in the balls and his hands drop and then I go in for a straight blast. Another important part of the Wing Chun stance is the easy Kim Yong Mao or the gold stance. It's a very square stance. Is because if I'm up close, let's say I'm really up close in this distance, this is called trapping distance or Wing Chun distance. And now both my hands have access to, to, to be used at, uh, at high speed, right? I can use it for attacking, I can use it for trapping, right? I can use it for unbalancing. So the Wing Chun stance being more squared up, you see some Mike Tyson doing this too. He squares up a little bit when he's closer because now you have access to, his, to the attack points with both hands. If you do this, this one's a little bit too close and this one's a little bit too far. Let's talk about defensive tactics. In boxing, very common defense is, let's say he's punching, is I'm slipping, right? Or ducking. Slipping, weaving, or weaving like this, okay? Reason it's good is because I don't have to worry about his kicks. I don't have to worry about knees. So I can duck low, right? Or I can slip or duck, okay? Like that. And because he's wanting to target my head mostly, and because there's usually more distance, it gives me more time to react to his punches. I can slip, things like that, right? So in boxing, they're slipping. Another defense that they use in boxing is just blocking, right? So I'm punching, he can block. Punching, he can block. I'm punching, he's blocking. Punching, he's blocking, right? Okay, so very common because you have big gloves and if you take a hit to your glove, no problem because it's all padded. Another common defense in boxing is just simply to block the attack. So if I'm punching, there's many ways to, pad, uh, to block it. You can block it like that. So many ways of using his glove. There's a cuff, right? So the parry, show me another one. You can do a side block, you can double block, right? So different ways of blocking. And it works very well because you got these big gloves even if I hit the top of the glove, it's padded. All this is padded here. So it helps to uh, soften the impact. So the key to Wing Chun defense is to be able to attack and defend at the same time. So in boxing, what, do you want to do, what you want to do in boxing is to set up counters, right? So if he's doing a punch, I slip and then I counter, right? Or I slip and counter, right? Or if he's doing that one, I slip and counter, okay? Or he's doing hook, right? I slip and counter. Right, do the right one, and slip, or a duck and counter, right? So it's kind of like two motions. I or he, he throws another cross, I, I roll, right, and, he, and, and I counter. So it's kind of like two motions, very common in boxing. In Wing Chun, the concept is to block and counter at the same time, or block and attack at the same time. So the same attacks, I'm blocking and punching at the same time. If he's doing a cross, I block and punch at the same time, right? Block and punch at the same time. So what are some benefits of learning Wing Chun, and what are some benefits of learning boxing? Well, in Wing Chun, what you learn uh, is sensitivity. You learn how to feel his, his force. So let's say you're in the clinch and he's pushing in. You can feel his force and use it against him, right? Or if he's pushing a little bit, little bit off to the side, then you can use his force against him and take him off balance. So that's what Wing Chun is for. And you can, so that you can use your, use your um, sensitivity to feel his energy, feel his balance, right? Stuff like that. So you can get him off balance, okay? So there's a lot of this manipulating of his energy and the trapping his hands, right? Moving his hands so that you can use, so that you can trap him like this, okay? So I'm using sensitivity. I'm using sensitivity of my forearms to feel where his energy is going, where his attack is going, so that I can take his balance and also get openings and attack. Another benefit of learning Wing Chun is now, because you don't have gloves on, you have many options with your hands. So instead of just punching, Right? Now you have lots of options. You can grab, right? You can double grab. You can poke him in the eye. You can, you can use elbows. Elbows. You can use the blade of your hand. And you can use kicks, right? You can kick the knee or kick the groin. So you can use a combination attack, low and punch and high, right? Or kick and grab at the same time. You can grab and kick, 
right? Oh, that one comes in. Grab and kick. So you, that's your long range attack. The benefit of training boxing is you get to develop your cardio. A lot of boxing classes, they focus a lot on skipping, cardio, running, road work, drills on the heavy bag. So you get a good sweat, you get a good workout. Another benefit of boxing is they focus a lot on footwork. So a lot of footwork drills so that you can move around very quickly, right? Another benefit in boxing is you get to learn how to use head movement like we showed you. And head movement helps you to get more mobility and flexibility in your upper body and coordination and balance. So this is just a very short summarized comparison between Wing Chun and boxing. Obviously, neither sport is better. It's really up to which one you want to train and what your fighting style is. In my opinion, I think you should learn both because then you get the best from both styles. So remember to check out my free webinar. It's my free event that you can go to. It's called Chi Life Mastery. Go to chilifemastery.com and I'll see you there. Use the chi and prosper.